Greetings from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Jonathan Adams here today to provide you uh, and lead you through an abbreviated version of our, our worship services from this past weekend, uh, June 5th and 6th, what, what we call the, the time after Pentecost, or, or in some regions of the church, is called ordinary time. Uh, a, if you'd like to follow along with our, our worship service today, you can download a bulletin from our website at www.mt-calvarylutheran.org. Go to the Worship tab and then click on Bulletins. Uh, and you'll be able to, to download uh, a PDF that, that will allow you to join along with the, the responses and follow along with the readings. With all that said, though, uh, we'll get started here. And I, I greet you with the, the words of the Apostle Paul. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. And let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Throughout the, this time uh, after Pentecost, well, what I already referred to as ordinary time, uh, throughout the, the summer and early fall, we're going to be using what's called the semi-continuous series of the lectionary. Now, our, our lectionary is the, the series uh, of Scripture texts, the, the schedule that, that we follow from week to week with a, an Old Testament, a Psalm, a New Testament, and a, a Gospel lesson. Uh, and, and typically, uh, we, we follow what's called the, the complementary series, which means the, the Old Testament lesson is picked to, in some way or another, complement the New Testament epistle or, or Gospel lesson. But, but during the, the semi-continuous series, the, the Old Testament lesson is uh, picked in order to be sort of a, a continuous reading through sections of the Old Testament, following certain themes, excuse me, not, necess not necessarily matching up with the, the gospel, but giving us some exposure to some, some parts of the the story of the people of Israel that, that we wouldn't have heard otherwise. So our, our reading today comes from 1 Samuel. And, and up to this point in, in the history, there, there has not really been a, a line of hereditary kings or, or monarchs leading the, the people of Israel. They, they've had charismatic leaders who, who have jumped up from time to time, the, the folks that we refer to as judges, uh, but, in general, they, they say, the Lord is king, and, and they haven't needed a king. But, but now, Israel is starting to get jealous. The other nations and countries around them have kings, and they want one, too. And, and so that's what we hear today in, in our reading uh, of 1 Samuel chapter 8 and 11. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, There will be the ways of the king who will reign, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. 
He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may also be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the semi-continuous series, the, the psalm is pointed or appointed or, or selected uh, to, to correspond with the, the story from the Old Testament. And so I invite you, if you are so able and desire to do so, uh, to join me as we recite Psalm 138 responsively. Uh, you're welcome to join me on the even verses. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second reading comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Uh, and, and in the time since Paul last visited in the church in Corinth, they've been visited by other people who, who are claiming to be uh, apostles, who are claiming to be prophets, who are, are claiming to be able to perform miracles and, and end all suffering. The thing is, they're not legitimate. They're, they're making these promises and, and these offers, but they don't have the power that they claim to do. And, and Paul, in, in his response to the church in Corinth, tells them that, unfortunately, we, we do have to suffer during our time on earth. But, but because of God, even though our, our bodies waste away, we always have the promise of eternal life through Jesus. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, Everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. 
so we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are so inclined to do so as you watch at home, I invite you to rise either in body or spirit as we prepare to receive and hear the gospel today. Alleluia! The ruler of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Alleluia! Our gospel reading today, coming from the third chapter of the Gospel of of Mark, takes place as Jesus is being accused of being possessed by demons. Uh, it, it's, in fact, his own family and, and the religious scribes and authorities who, who are accusing him uh, of taking things uh, a bit too far. And, and in his response to that, he, he talks in parables uh, about the fight against evil. And, and he says, a house divided cannot stand. And, and he's talking about evil, but but he's also talking to us, I I think, as you'll hear in today's sermon. So hear the gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for the people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. He said, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here! Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from Christ Jesus, our Lord and drum major. Amen. When I was in marching band in college at West Virginia University, the band directors would take time during band camp and end the night each day by telling a story about the band's history. The the nickname uh, of 
WVU's marching band is the pride of West Virginia. And the stories that the band directors told at the end of each day were meant to show all of the students and band just how much the band meant not just to alumni of the university but to people all over West Virginia. One story that, that we heard each year without fail was a, about a young woman who had been in band during her college years who was blind. I think her, her name may have been Sally. And Sally was blind. Now, uh, imagine how difficult it must be to learn music when you're blind and can't read the music. There is braille music, but, but it's expensive and, and hard to come by. And, and certainly, there are notable blind musicians like Stevie Wonder, but for the most part, they're few and far between. But Sally ha had overcome all of that in high school, and here she was in one of the largest college marching bands in the country. In order to learn the drill, the movements and, and formations around the field during shows, Sally had a, a partner during rehearsals who, who would help her find her spots, help her figure out just how far it was from one to another, what direction she needed to go and how many steps she needed to take. But during performances, it was all Sally. She carefully memorized in her head each and every step she needed to take and it worked flawlessly. She stayed in line and in sync with the rest of the band even though she couldn't see what was going on. That is until one night when she zigged when she should have zagged. Suddenly, Sally was not where she was supposed to be. She was out of sync and out of line with the rest of the band. The, the band directors watched in horror, trying to figure out what they, they could do to make sure she, she didn't get trampled by a, a tuba player or, or worse. And then they, they watched uh, as she paused, marching in place for uh, a few beats and began to move. She zigged and zagged around the field until all of a sudden she stepped right back in between the two people she belonged between. She was right back where she belonged. She, in her head, was able to picture what she needed to do to get herself back in line with everyone else. The band directors told this story each year as part of conveying one of their mottos. Every member, every note, every step, every time. You would think that, that in a band with 350 or so people, it, it would be easy to hide in the crowd when you make mistakes. But the reality is that one person getting out of line, one person playing the wrong music, one person speeding up the tempo, one mistake by one person could throw off the other 349. And, and that's, that's just if it were an accident. If someone were intentionally trying to throw things off, the results could be disastrous. A house divided cannot stand. That's what Jesus says when, when he's being challenged on one side by the scribes and religious authorities and, and by his own family on the other. They're concerned that, that his ministry across Galilee has gotten out of hand, that, that he's pushed the envelope a bit too far. They seem to be asking Jesus, hey, can't we just stick with the status quo? They try to restrain him. But 
anyone who knows anything of the gospel knows that, that the good news is often a challenge to the status quo. That the message uh, of Jesus Christ and the cross can be downright unsettling at times. And Jesus knows this too. As much as he tries to upset the proverbial fruit basket, he also always offers a calm and reassuring presence to those he cares about the most. He never gives up on the disciples, even when it's clear that, that they're not understanding his message or when they're being foolish or, or lacking in faith. He never gives up on, on the people that, that he tries to help. Later in Mark is the story uh, of him healing the blind man. And, and since our, our message today began with a, a blind person, I, I thought it was interesting to note that, that when Jesus heals the blind man, he doesn't get it right on the first try. The first try, he asks what the man can see, and he says, well, there's a tree over there, but it, it's, it's fuzzy, I think. And so Jesus tries again until the man's sight is restored fully. Jesus offers reassurance and, and comfort in the midst of change and confusion. And all he asks is that people follow him. All he asks is that they stay in line, that they stay with him. Think of something like a, a musical ensemble, a, a marching band or an orchestra or, or a choir. The, the beauty uh, of the music that they create together. The art comes from unity, comes from a, a shared goal. Every member, every note, every step, every time. If the trumpets tried to pull away from the tuba players while the drummers were doing something completely differently, it wouldn't work. It would all fall apart. And likewise, when we follow God, when we follow Jesus, we can't try and pull apart the gospel. We can't try and pull apart the good news. We, we can't try and pull Jesus in one direction or another to suit our own desires. We can't look at the radical message of Christianity and, and be like Jesus' family saying, Hey, can we tame it down a bit? Maybe not fling the door quite so wide open. No. In order to be able to fight the powers of evil in the world, we need to be together. We need to be all in. In what Jesus says to the people gathered there together that day, he, he shuts down the idea uh, of creating division for your own personal benefit. He, he suggests that, that there is evil in the world and that we are in a fight against it, that, that we need to be united as we restrain the devil and all his evil powers. Rather than pointing fingers we need to be united in our efforts. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide our work as a church and as a family. As often as possible, I, I try to use the language of church family. Combining the, those two words into one phrase, our church family. Yes, it's a, a congregation. Yes, it's a parish Sometimes it's more appropriate to use those words, but, but often I call you my church family because that's exactly what you are. You are my brothers and sisters in Christ. God chose each and every one of us to be part of this family here, to be one family, one house of God. 
and a house divided cannot stand. Think about your church and think about what it would look like if different factions or, or groups or individuals in the church tried to pull in different directions. Sooner or later, it would fall apart. It wouldn't work. Just like if the individual instrumentalists in a, a band or singers in a choir tried to pull apart. It would fall apart and not work. Jesus says, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. So let's stand up together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us stand as a house of God that is united, not divided. And let's fight the good fight against evil and do the work of God. Amen. We had a, a baptism during Sunday worship this week, and, and so uh, my binder has a little bit more extra stuff in it than it normally does. I, I invite you now to join me as we come before the triune God in prayer, lifting up the prayers of intercession. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among all nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the ages, in your goodness you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our digital abridged worship today. Uh, we'll continue to, to be offering this in the, the coming weeks as a, a way for you to connect with, with the, the scriptures and, and prayers and 
and, and the Word of God. Uh, I invite you, uh, as we prepare to sign off, to hear the, this benediction, taken inspiration from the, the words of Paul's letter to the Romans. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. May God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Again, thank you for joining us for, for this moment of worship. We'll see you again soon. Bye.